Hi everybody, welcome back to this last module on inclusive heritage. We will talk about heritage, diplomacy and well-being. The major question raised here is how does inclusiveness relate to heritage management? We have seen that heritage is best protected by domestic laws. Some even want to take it further and argue that heritage should be in the hands of the community and, at the same time, that the community's values should be protected both nationally and internationally. Hence, the international community could have a checks and balance role in terms of human rights and international conventions locally. Often, though, the communities are not all equal. Many monuments commemorate the dominant narrative by commemorating national stories and nation-state achievements like the cons consolidation of a state. If UNESCO follows a nation-state model, how does the community see itself reflected? Some narratives are today used to highlight certain heritage while not acknowledging other histories. Also, are there priorities of heritage and hierarchies of values? Which audience counts most or which audience is catered to more? Laura Jane Smith and Emma Waterton suggest communities should visit each other's heritage rather than one class promoting one heritage over the other. In our second module, we have talked about inequality, particularly in the context of South Africa as an example. How can places such as South Africa with different layered and parallel heritage discuss inclusive heritage in the present day? What type of heritage discourse needs to take place for people to appreciate heritage beyond their own being represented? When we are now discussing the issue of inclusive heritage, it's important to expand our understanding of terms such as community and heritage. We get the notion that we all have a stake in heritage, and when we talk about heritage and community, we include even the professional community working on heritage, such as archaeologists, heritage workers, architects, and also policymakers. However, it's important to be critical about terms such as community and heritage. We have learned that for state institutions, the cultural and economical function is more important, whereas for indigenous peoples, not only the economic aspect, but also the social and religious function is of major concern. We have also learned that although ethnographic museums were inherited after many former colonies gained independence, in most parts of the world, the idea of preserving objects in such a way is not universal. Even the use of monuments changes, and there is a static idea in the notion of a museum which many local communities around the world do not relate to. Now, critical initiatives such as the World Intellectual Property Organization and various other authorities are addressing local and global issues covered in this wider cultural sphere. These declarations and regulations highlight the importance of consent and recognize inclusiveness in the protection of heritage. We have heard from our experts about their views on how heritage can be more inclusive. However, the cases we have discussed show how heritage is important and very relevant to people's identity. Most of the conflicts seem to use heritage as a battleground rather than heritage being the original source of the problem. We have seen that historical issues such as historical or colonial grievances or current day religious, political and socio-economic conflicts underpin most of the heritage under threat. The final point is basically we should continue the discussion 
of how culture can be part of the contextualization of the problems and their solutions in terms of dealing with war, diplomacy, and basic needs such as education. How can we create the cultural values that will nurture peace and bring people together? We know culture is also linked to a political situation. However, cases like Somaliland show that cultural values can be used to create peace using social norms, cultural ethics, and making people responsible for their acts. There, cultural heritage is not just for economic or educational benefit, but active in gluing various communities together. We look forward to further discussions with you in the forum, but first we have some more expert interviews and a case study for you. Thank you for participating and learning with us.